Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome again to another episode of Sequoia Commercial Training on Wednesday night. And if this is the first time that you're here wondering what Sequoia is all about, we are a commercial lending platform. We connect people that need funding to funding sources that has the money to fund. So again, we can fund projects ranging from working capitals to equipment loans to one to four unit investment properties to fix and flips, you name it. The reason that we build this platform is because we realize that we believe that the commercial lending industry, it is a closed door industry. There's a lot of people out there that needs funding, but yet they have no idea where to find the funding. So we build this platform so people like you and I can come to it. We bring in our resources. We come here to connect with each other. We connect with the funding source. And ultimately, we can help our community, help the business people around us who need the funding the most. So that what that is what Sequoia is all about. We do businesses all around the United States in all 50 different states. And um and I believe there are many of us um you know we have many agents across the country right now. So that's what Sequoia lending is all about. And every Wednesday night we have trainings like this to educate, to share with you what commercial lending is all about, what you can do um, uh, when you get onto this platform. And besides of that, we do travel from city to city to city to talk to brokers, talk to different groups about our platform. And as a matter of fact, we just came back from Atlanta, Georgia, and now we are planning on a trip to go up to New York sometimes next week. And then after that, we'll be going to Houston, Texas. So all these things is going to be announced. If you are connected to us on our Facebook, please do so. If you're here, if you have not yet connected to our to us on Facebook, please do so. Ask the people who invited you to this meeting, connect to us on Facebook. Not only that you can communicate with us, but you can also see what are the deals that we close, what kind of um, uh, capability that 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 you as a Sequoia agent can tap into, uh, so on and so forth. So again, we welcome everyone onto this training tonight. So before I go into the training, what I would like to share with everyone is we have something new coming up. We have a new series on YouTube. Is what we call the, is what we call the um, uh, the deals that we close. Okay, so a lot of people asking us, hey, Alan, what kind of deal you close? Who is closing all these deals? Are you for real? Okay, <laughs> so what we decided to do from that from this point on is that hey, when we close a deal, we will invite our agents to come online to share with them to share with us what their background is, where they from, how they find a client, and how we close the deal, so on and so forth. So today we actually have our first video up. Uh, also, if you want, um, connect subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can get tons and tons and tons of information from here. But when you got up here, uh, the deals that we, that this the first video that we have is called the deal we close. Um, this type of video is not gonna be long, somewhere between five to 10 minutes. Um, uh, for this particular one, it's from uh, Mr. William Wong, all the way from uh, South Calif uh, California. I think, I believe that he's in the, in, the, in the Los Angeles area. He is an insurance agent. Um, he was talking to his client and his client, I believe that his client introduced his friend to him who happened to be a truck driver, who happened to be having a trucking company that needs funding uh, to purchase a truck. And that's how he got his client. And that's what I said for, for the longest time. I keep telling everybody that, hey, where do you find your client? Partner up with real estate agent, insurance agent, realtors, loan officers, so on and so forth. Because these people, they are out there talking to client every single day. If you don't know where to client, utilize someone else's effort. All these people out there talking to client every single day. Might as well to go up there and partner up with these people. And when they have clients, they can send you the deal. And better yet, you let them know that, hey, why don't you you know, do your own deal, join the Sequoia platform. You can submit that deal and get that deal closed and you as the agent can get commission out of it. And what do I got out of it? I got the override from it. And that's what this platform is all about. Not that you only do this thing by yourself. You can actually build an organization within uh, Sequoia, build a commercial lending company or business within Sequoia Lending. So time is tough right now. We all know interest rate has gone up so much. And uh, a lot of the loan officers, 
and real estate agents, insurance agents, they are, they are struggling. That is the reality. If you're in this field, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not in this field, go talk to any loan officers that you know. A lot of them will tell you that, hey, life is tough right now. It is tough, very tough. And many of them are changing their career. A lot of them, they just cannot survive. They either they, I just talked to one of our advisors today. He owns a mortgage company. He told me that he, he has to shut down 65% of his staff. It's just not there anymore. So this is reality, but the, this is, one thing that I believe is that when one door closed, the other door is open. And I believe that door that opened that door is here in the commercial lending industry because a lot of the lender bank are tightening up their underwrite, uh, 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 tightening up their underwriting guidelines. They are tightening up their capital. And many clients that used to be able to get funding from a bank, they're not able to do that anymore. And for the next two to three years, alternative funding is the place to go. Now, you don't have to believe me. I've been talking about this ever since last year when the Fred increased the interest rate. I don't know if you remember in, I think it's early 2022, last year. The, the interest rate was at 3%, 4%. But when they start to increase interest rate, I've been start telling people that, hey, something's coming down the pipeline. It's, it's, it will be getting more and more difficult to get the funding that you need. So alternative funding is the way to go for the next two, two to three years. And that is the reality. And right now, I, get, I, I, I let you know, right now in the business loan, many times I talk about DSC loan, okay? For DSC loan, right now we have lenders that come to us saying that, hey, Alan, right now we can fund DSCR that is below one. Do you know what that means? That is huge. When a DSCR equals to one, meaning that that building does not make money, but does not lose money. And when the DSCR is 1.1 1 .1 or, or, or above one, that means that that building is making money. But when the DSCR is below one, that means that the building is actually losing money. But right now we have lenders that saying that, hey, even the DSCR is 0.75, they can still fund their property. OK, so that is what happened out there. Now, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, it's OK. It is absolutely OK. But what I'm telling you is that on the traditional funding side, that funding is drying up. They're all pulling it back. But on the alternative funding side, lenders are getting more and more aggressive on our side. So that is what we're seeing. So anyhow, from this point on, we are going to have this new series right here is called the deals that we close pay attention to it and hopefully by watching this video that you have an idea what type of loans that we can close in sequoia that means that you can close that type of deal also as long as you go out there to start talking to people okay now besides the funding loans sequoia is also position ourselves not just a commercial loan company we position ourselves as a business consulting company. We have products that is going to come into our platform that is going to blow your mind away. Is that it, we have product that come into our pipeline pipeline that every client, well, client will need it. You don't even need to sell it to them. When you mention it to them, they will come in and buy it from you. We will have that product coming in. Okay. So again, in about a week or two, you will hear from us. So pay attention to our Facebook, pay attention to our social media network, and you know the uh, uh, what's coming down in the pipeline. So with that being said, um, I'm going to go into the training for tonight. So what are we going to talk about? A few weeks ago, I talked about different type of funding under real estate loan. Okay, we talked about one to four unit, what is mix, mix and, uh, uh, mixed use, what is multifamily, so on and so forth. So today we are going to talk a little bit about business fundings. Uh, what are they? When do you use them? How do you use them? So on and so forth. So when you sign up with Sequoia, you should, every one of you should have your own website like this. This is your platform. When you pay the 30 bucks a month, a lot of people saying that I don't want to pay the membership fee. No, you're not paying the membership fee. When you pay the 30 bucks a month, you have an entire working website and back office for you to run your business. Okay. Now imagine that you go out there to open up your own business and you need to build a website. How much do you need to pay for that website? 
first of all, you have to find people to design it. That costs you thousands and thousands of dollars. And plus, every single month, you need to pay hundreds of dollars to just maintain that website. If you have a business, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But here, we give you a website fully function, full office, back office. We're only asking for 30 bucks a month. Okay, so that is the is and also on top of it, if you close one deal, you close one deal. I don't care what kind of deal it is. You close one deal, we give you 12 months an entire year for free. Why? It's because again, we don't want people just to sign up and not doing anything. Because every time sign up a new account set up like this, it costs the company money to maintain it. You know it, right? So again, we want you to sign up. We want you to see the value of this. We want you to go out there to actually close deals okay when you close one deal regardless what the loan amount is we give you 12 months for free so when you have the website like this the most important page that you have is this product page right here okay now by the way a lot of people asking us can you put this into a different language can you translate it into spanish can you translate it into in, uh, uh, into chinese into korean yes the the website can do this thing for you. Let me demonstrate. Now I'm using Google Chrome for this particular, I mean, I'm using Google Chrome, it's so easy. So all you have to do is to do a right click on your mouse. Now you see something called translate to English. You click on it and now you see this screen right here that pops up. And all you have to do just to click on the three dot right here saying that, hey, choose another language. So let's say I want to choose Spanish, okay? So now I go to Spanish. And where is it? Right here. And I say translate. Boom. It translated into Spanish. If you want to translate it into other languages. So for example, uh, we have a lot of Chinese. Is it translated in Chinese? All right, great. Boom. It goes into Chinese. Very simple. So again, you can recruit pretty much anybody. If they don't even speak English, it's okay. We have a lot of people that do not speak English. We have, we have agents that only speak Chinese. And again, you can definitely do so. So let me translate it back to English so that we can continue our training. Okay, here we go. Okay, now we're back. So the most important product, most important page that you need to know is the product page. I suggest you, if you really want to learn, go to your product page and try to understand what they are. And when you don't know what one to four unit investment property is, you want to find out more about this, go to our YouTube. Go to video. And I bet you there is a video right here to talk about one to four unit. See commercial loan for one to four unit right here. Listen to it, what it is. And if you talk want to talk about fix and flip, and you go to YouTube, you want to find out what fix and flip is, you look, funding fix and flip, right? So we already have a video for you. If you want to learn, it's all there. And if you want to talk, learn about, uh, let's say, mixed use, you click on it, it gives you some overview about what mixed use is, some criteria, so on and so forth. If you want to know more about this, you go to YouTube channel and you see, uh, where's the mixed use? Okay, uh, got to be somewhere. Multifamily, right here. Equipment loan, okay, you got the idea. Uh, we have so many different type of uh, fundings right here. So again, the product page, it's very, very important for you to get to know what kind of product that we can offer. So today we are focusing on the business funding side of it. So what are they? Now, business funding, it's anything that does not have real estate involved. Okay, no real estate involved. So the first type, the, the most, we funded the most is what we call equipment loans. The truck that we funded, yes, it's type of equipment. The, um, uh, the, the big fan that we funded, it's equipment. So again, I mean, we have a lot of equipment loans. So if you want to find out what equipment is, click on this. Now, equipment loan, let's define what equipment is. If a company come to come to you saying, hey, I need to buy a computer. Is that equipment? No, it's not equipment. Somebody saying, hey, I need to purchase a desk is not equipment. Equipment is something essential for that business to generate income. Without that piece of equipment, that company cannot survive. So that is equipment. So for example, 
restaurant. Uh, a refrigerator, yes, is an equipment. The vending, uh, the uh, the uh, credit card machine, yes, is an equipment. Okay, um, a doctor's office, X-ray machine, yes, an equipment. A chair is not equipment. Okay, so uh, equipment or another way that we define is that equipment is something that you cannot just bring home easily. It got to stay at the location. All right, so that is equipment. Now, equipment funding is actually one of the fastest type of uh, product that we fund. Many people ask me, hey, Alan, what should I focus on? I'm just new to commercial lending. What should I focus on? I suggest you're going to focus on something that is easy to fund, fast to fund, that you can get paycheck quickly, just like William. He funded that truck 10, 11 days. He got his commission already. He didn't even know. We paid him already. He didn't even know. But equipment, it's one of the fastest way that we can fund. Normally, we can fund equipment between five to 10 business days. Now, remember, in equipment, if the loan amount, if the cost of the equipment is less than $100,000, okay, all we need is just an application and an invoice. Those are the two things that we need, an application and an invoice. Now, of course, what type of company you should look for to ensure that you have a high percentage of closing ratio? So normally you would like to look for business that already been in business for at least two years. Okay, been in business for two years. Why? Because when a business been in two years, most likely they already been through all the ups and downs and things like this. And now, you know, they are in the, hopefully they are in the growth, growth phase of the company. So look for a company that has been in business for two years. All right. Now, what if the loan amount is above $100,000? So in this case, then we need more information. We need two years of tax return. We need three months of business bank statements. Okay, so now if you don't remember, it's okay. When you submit a loan scenario to us, we will let you know what we need. Okay, but I just want to, I just want you to remember equipment loan is very, very funding. So once they provide the, uh, documentation once they provide the um, in, uh, uh, application and the invoice now we can approve we, we can underwrite it very very quickly normally within 24 hours we can come back and let you know that hey we can fund it or not okay now some people ask invoice why do I need to give you an invoice can I just can I just screenshot something from 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 the website and send it to you no, absolutely not. We have to get an invoice. Why? Because equipment loan, remember one thing, when we fund equipment loans, we do not send the money to the client. Where do we send the money to? We send the money to the vendor. Vendor receive the money, vendor ship out the equipment to the client, and clients stop paying for the monthly payment. And that is why it's very important for us to make sure the vendor is a legitimate vendor, okay? They also, the vendor, most likely also the vendor need to be in operation for at least two years selling that kind of equipment. Now, if you have a new vendor that have a new product that try to sell, most cases it will be very difficult just because there's not enough data to support that whatever the product that they sell, it's it's a functional product or it's a product that it's um, it uh, uh, makes sense, whatever that might be. So again, a lot of the lender would also look at the vendor, uh, how long they have been in the, in, in the business. Now also understand that there's a lot of people are purchasing equipments overseas, buying stuff from Germany, buying stuff from China, buying stuff from India. Got, I got it. A lot of, a lot of equipment coming from overseas, but, they have to have an office here in the United States in order for us to fund. If all they are, if they are buying things online that they ship it over, then we cannot fund them because we do not want to send the uh, send the money overseas, and when they take the money, they disappear. Okay, so they have to have an office here in the United States. So that is the reason that we need to ask for um, uh, 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 an invoice from from the client. Okay. So now, once they once they do that, 
And if the equipment is more than $100,000, then obviously they need to see more information to make sure that the client who purchased this type of equipment can support the loan, whether it's $100,000, $1 million, $2 million, whatever that might be. Okay. So that is equipment loan. Pretty simple. Let's move on to the next one. Truck and heavy equipment. Now, equipment and truck, yes, they are all equipment, but they are actually into two different categories. The truck, um, there are so many different types of truck. Now, one thing that we don't fund, it's consumer vehicle. If you buy a Honda Accord, most likely we don't fund that kind of deal. I mean, you buy a Honda Accord, you can just go to the dealer and get the loan from them, right? But if you are purchasing an F-150, um, one of those crew truck, yes, we can fund something like that. All right. Um, so again, we are talking about commercial trucks. Commercial truck has 18 wheelers, boxers, dumb trucks, you name it. So ideally, you purchase the truck from a, a dealer. Many lenders out there do not like to fund if you per, if the client purchase a truck from a private seller. Many lenders do not want to touch that. But yet, there are a handful of lenders out there that are willing to do something like this. Okay? So I'm going to talk about both. So when you purchase anything from a dealer, life is very simple. You, you get an invoice from the dealer. We, we, we looked at the profile of the company. We approve it. We send the money to the dealer. They sign the document. That's it. That's the end of it. Okay? The dealer is going to take care of everything to prepare that truck for sale. For example, they have the bill of rights. They will install a GPS. Yes, they need to install a GPS on the truck because again, if if for whatever reason the um you know the client default on the loans, that the lender knows where to go and get the truck back. <laughs> okay, so they do install a GPS on the truck, so on and so forth. Now, if you're purchasing from a private sale, the the process will be the same, but there will be extra step the lender is going to send an inspector out to the to the truck where the truck is to inspect the truck. Because normally if you were purchasing from a dealer, the dealer will have done all those things already and send a send a report to the to the to the lender. But because of private sale, they have to do that. Okay. They have to send somebody out there to do the inspection. They also have to send someone out there to install the GPS. Okay. So after that is done, if everything's okay, the title's no problem then the lender is going to will fund the client and wire the money to the seller. Seller give the truck to the, to, the, to the buyer, and that's the end of it. Now, also remember, when you're buying a truck, most of these clients are not able to, are not buying a brand new truck. That's very, very expensive for commercial. So what they do is that they, want, they don't want to fund anything that's older than, I think it's today, 2015. Okay, anything that is earlier than 2015, it's very difficult to get funding for it. Uh, anything that after 2015, yeah, we can we can definitely do it. So regardless, it's equipment loan or truck loan or heavy equipment, we always want to fund up to 100%, 100%. Okay, so all the deals that we fund is 100%. Now, there will be cases that we're not able to fund 100% on the equipments. What are those cases? For example, somebody that just got into the industry. Um, let's say I just opened up a restaurant. I need to purchase all these uh, 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 restaurant equipments. Uh, or I just opened up a mechanic shop. I need a lot of equipment for my mechanic shop. So if you are just brand new company, most likely the maximum you can get from the lender is $50,000. That's the max. Now, it also depending on the credit score of the client, all right? Um, so the minimum they can go down to is about 5,000. The maximum for any, any new business is about 50,000. And same thing with truck. And if somebody that's been driving commercial trucks for the last two years, and now he wants to open up his own company and uh, got his own order. Now he's ready to go out there and to purchase a truck. Sometimes the lender will only fund you 60%, 70%. So 
something like that. And then the client has to put down some some sort of a down payment to it. It's just because, you know, he has it, it it's a new business. Now, why why is it like this? Because a lot of people are saying that hey, the new business are the are the businesses that need the money the most. Absolutely. But on the other on the other hand, to the lender's perspective, the new business is very risky. We do not know if they can if that business model will work or not, right? So it might fail. We all know that many businesses fail within the in the in the first five years of the uh, you know of, of the operation. So the lender cannot take that much risk. They will you know they they will ask for some sort of down payment, and also you will run into clients that has very challenging credit. All right. Credit scores in the 500, 600, but they want to buy a truck. Can they do that? Absolutely, they can do that. But yet they do need to put down quite a bit of down payment. And obviously the payment will be much higher. Now for this type of loan, the equipment loans and heavy equipment, truck loan, things like this, there's no interest rate. We do not call it the interest rate. We call it the buy up rate. What does it mean? You borrow $1, you pay me back $1.20. You pay me back dollar thirty cents in sixty months, forty eight months, thirty eight months, whatever that might be. So that is buy up rate. So the way that they determine the um, the the payment is such where let's say a gentleman out there to purchasing uh, a, a a truck, okay, let's say sixty thousand dollars. Now we funded him sixty thousand dollars. Now, of course, the lender is going to add their fees to it, add their interest to it, and everything into it. So now they come back with a proposal saying, they go, okay, fine. In that case, um, I'm going to give you, I, I'm going to offer you 36 months payment. Each month, you pay me back $1,200 and you pay 36 months or 48, 48 months, you pay $1,000. Or you pay sixty months, you pay ninety uh, uh, nine hundred dollars, so on and so forth. So now you see it, it's actually a car loan. So for a lot of people that purchasing equipment, at the end of the day, they really don't care about the interest rate. All they care is that hey, I purchased this equipment for my restaurant, for my business, for my doctor's practice, whatever that might be. How much I can afford to pay a monthly basis? So let's say an equipment for a restaurant that they pay only five hundred bucks a month, it's nothing. I mean we. We funded quite a bit of those uh, restaurant robots. I don't know if you've seen some of those, right? So a lot of the restaurants out there, because you know they don't have employee anymore. I mean, uh, it's very difficult to, for, for them to find waiters and waitresses after COVID. And they purchase all these equipments to deliver. It's just like a waiter, deliver food inside of the, uh, uh, the restaurant. So instead of paying a live person thousands of dollars every single month, now they can you know, just use the robot for about five, six hundred dollars a month. So to them, it's okay. That's fine. So again, remember for you to sell something like this is not on the interest rate. It's on the month, it's on the monthly payment, how much they can afford. It's just like a car payment, right? You walk into a Mercedes Benz, they never tell you how much this car costs. They were saying, that, okay, well, six hundred bucks a month, you will get this S class, right? So that's how they sell sell something like this. Same idea with equipment and walking capital. All right. So let's move on. Um, uh, working capital. Now, working capital is for funding that it's not purchasing equipment. So it's very important for you when you talk to your client, your client saying, that, oh, I need $100,000. Ask them, what do you need $100,000 for? They will say, oh, $100,000, I need $50,000 to buy equipment. The other $50,000, I need to purchase inventory. Now you know, this is two loans. It would be better for them to do two loans. Too long is that one is a $50,000 equipment loan. We can fund them in five days, 10 days, 15 days, whatever that might be. Number two, we give them a working capital, okay? Working capital, is, you, they can use the money for purchasing inventory, payrolls, um, you know, hiring person, staffing, pay bills, whatever that might be. So that is working capital. Now in working capital, there are also many type of working capital. The first type, is called business line of credit. It's called business line of credit. You have company up to you. You will, you have client up to you saying that oh I you know I just want to have a line of credit. I might not use it nowadays. I just want to have a line of credit, and um, you know when I need it, I use it. So many times, lender do not just like to give you a line of credit by itself. 
Because why? When you do not use the line of credit, the money is not leaving the bank. Does it make sense? When the money is not leaving the bank, the bank is not making any money. Does it make sense? Okay, so they want you to use the line of credit. Now, we do have lenders that can apply, that can offer line of credit just by itself, but it's getting very, very difficult to do for the same reason. So normally, if you just want to have a line of credit, you the business has to be in business for at least five years. Just like when somebody would give you a credit card, you got to have good credit. You got to have good history to show. So in order for somebody to give you a BLOCK business line of credit, you need to be in business for at least five years. Number two, your monthly revenue deposit into your account. Minimum $30,000 a month. Every single month got to be $30,000 a month. And they want to see between three to six months of business bank statement. Okay. So with that being said, then, then they might consider to give you a line of credit. The second type is what we call um, cash events. Now, this type of loan, it's like a urgent patch loan. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 um, urgent loan. Somebody that out of options, but they need money tomorrow very, very quickly. And, you know, in that case, and they don't have any tax return to show, they don't have any financial to show, but they can show at least three months of business bank statement. So in that case, we can fund them cash advance. Um, this type of loan is expensive. You're talking about at least 2% a month. If you're talking about 2% a month, you're talking about 24% a year, right? So that is expensive. Now, why would people need some this type of loan? It's because they need it for emergency use. We funded somebody a cash advance that he is in the trading business, that he needs money to purchase that inventory immediately. Otherwise, you know, he would just lost the opportunity. So we give him the money, cash advance, and he used that money to pay for whatever he needs to pay for, but in about three, four, six months, and he will pay back that loan. Now, this type of loan is is what uh, 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 most of the time they will need to pay back the client, pay back the lender every single day. In some cases, they pay them back every single week. Okay, so this type of loan is not ex uh, is not cheap. It's expensive, but people use it for emergency use. So that's the second type of loan is called. Uh, Walking uh, uh, a cash advance. The next type of loan is called term loan. So let's say they've been in business for at least two years, three years, stabilized business, and they have good uh, good income, ten thousand and up, twenty thousand somewhere right there. Average out ten twenty thousand dollars minimum a month, and now we can get in get them into a term loan. A term loan normally is like a two year term, three year terms, five year terms, short term. Okay, so they use the money for um, for whatever usage that they that they need. Uh, that type of loan is pretty straightforward. Um, not much paperwork need to be underwrite. They do need to see the financials. They do need to see the tax return, but it's 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 relatively easy to get as long as the business is stabilized. All right. Now the next time is the next type is called uh, SBA loan. Okay, SBA loan. SBA loan minimum is fifty thousand dollars. Anything that less than fifty thousand dollars is very. Uh, I can only offer you a term loan or a cash advance. Okay. So SBA loan, you can go all the way up to uh, five million dollars for working capital. Uh, it might be able to go up, up more, but it's it, it takes some it takes some creative uh, structure to put the deal together. So let's let's not worry about the creative side of. Uh, 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 of the loan. So SBA loan, um, this type of loan, it's they looked at everything. They looked at your financials, two years of tax returns, profit and loss statements, balance sheet, debt schedule, so on and so forth. Okay. So now if you have two businesses, so let's say you have you have again, let's get back to restaurant. You have restaurant A, you have restaurant B, and now restaurant A needs the funding. They need to see both restaurants financials to determine if you can get the loan for you. Why? It's because they want to see the global financial of that particular client. They don't want to give you money for restaurant A and you use that money to put it into restaurant B because restaurant B is losing money, right? So they want to see the global structure, how your financial looks like. And if you are all making money on all your businesses, 
okay, that's fine. They will give you the funding for it. But if you have one business is losing money and the other business is making money, they might cut down the the dollar amount that uh, that you ask for. So again, we can do that working capital, but this type of loan, it takes a lot longer to close because you have to go through SBA, you go through a lot of underwriting, you have to go through their chief credit officer. There's a lot of a lot of layer that you have to go through before you can get the loan done. So something like this, we are talking about at least at least 45 to 60 days, sometimes even longer, 90 days to get it close. Okay. Um, but the good thing is that this is the 10-year term much longer term, which means that the monthly payment is a lot less, okay? So that is what working capital is. Business acquisition is very similar to working capital. Somebody out there saying that, okay, I'm, I'm here to purchase a, I'm here to purchase a business. I'm buying a gas station. I'm buying a, um, a, a, a 7-Eleven. I'm buying a franchise. Yes, we can definitely do that. But this type of loan, remember a few things. Every time when somebody come to you and ask and saying, that, hey, I'm going to buy something like this, always ask them, number one, what kind of experience do you have? What kind of experience do you have? If you're buying a gas station, do you own any other gas stations right now? Or if this is the first time that you're buying a gas station, and if they're saying that, yeah, this is my first time purchasing a gas station, then you ask them, what kind of experience do you have to enable you to run the gas station? And they will say, oh, I used to work in a gas station. I used to be a senior manager on a gas station. I know how the operation. Now I want to I'll come out here to purchase it. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. You know, I mean, we can definitely get you a funding for it, especially you are purchasing franchise especially you're purchasing franchise. It's easy to get money, even though you don't have any experience or whatsoever. Um, because of franchise that you're purchasing, most of the franchise out there will have very good training program. They want to make sure that you become successful. So you, if you're purchasing franchise, it, it, it should be fine, right? But if you're just purchasing a mom and pop shop, um, that will be definitely experience would be very, very important. So give you another example, you know, somebody saying that, hey, I used to be a chef in a restaurant. I've been there for 20 years. I know how to cook food. And now I'm get out. I'm, I'm going to get out on my own. I want to open up a, a, a restaurant business. Can you get funding for it? A little challenge because you are only a chef means that you only know what, how the kitchen work. You know how to cook food, but do you know how to manage a business, how to order food, how to take care of the customers, how to do promotions, how to do marketing, how to manage your staff, you might not know. So in that case, the lender might ask you to partner up with somebody that who has experience to come in. Uh, but if you are saying, hey, I used to be a senior manager or uh, uh, executive in a restaurant business. Yeah, in that case that you know how the whole operation work, then you have a much better chance to get that uh, to, to get the business. So purchasing business experience, it's very, very, very important. Okay. Now, as long as you, we're not saying that, hey, obviously, if you have some sort of experience, the lender will still consider. So, for example, if you have a lot of management experience before working for someone else, and now you want to open up some sort of a, a, a business, yeah, they will be able to consider. But relatively, honestly, if you have somebody that is in the industry for a period of time that you can partner up together, then make things that much easier. Okay, so that is purchasing business. Now, normally working capital and buying business, we can fund up to 90%. We can fund up to 90%. Now, in some cases, we can even fund up to 100% if the guy has experience. So for example, right now we are doing a deal. The gentleman, uh, the lady has a nail salon. She already owned two nail salons, and now she wants to open up a third one. So in this case, we are trying to give her a loan that is 100% loan. She doesn't have to put down anything. And she can even roll all the closing costs and everything into that into that loan. So basically, it doesn't she doesn't need to come up with anything, and she has the money to open up a new one. 
So experience is that much important. So also um, financial is also very important. So one thing that you would like to educate your client is that, hey, go out there when you, when I mean, every, every business owner, I got it. Every business owner would do a lot of tax write-off and things like this. Um, but, you know, when you come to funding, that's what the lender's looking for. Um, so if they know that they are, they're going to get funding in a few, uh, in, in, in the future, they might need to adjust their, uh, uh, tax return. Okay. So to make sure that they, you know, they, that the tax return shows that they make money. So that is what business acquisition is. Next thing that we want to talk about, it's uh, account receivable. Um, a business, let's say an IT company or a, a, a electrical company that provides services to big corporation like Microsoft, uh, Apple's, Amazon's, whatever that might be. So after they finish the service, they will invoice the, the client, their client, which is in this case, those big corporations. Now they have something called an account receivable, AR, okay? So most cases, a lot of this big corporation is going to pay the AR in 30 days if they're lucky, or 60 days, or 90 days. So to a lot of business people, they cannot wait 90 days to get that pay, get that, get that funding from the corporation. They need that money to start the next project. They need that money to pay their employee. They may need that money to, to take care of all their bills, right? So in this case, we can do what we call the AR funding, account receivable. Account receivable. So based on that information, uh, uh, on the account receivable, then we can fund up to 90% of what that account receivable is. So uh, if you know uh, uh, manufacturing companies, medical companies, uh, so on and so forth, they have a lot of account receivable that is out there that they are not able to collect, okay? So we can definitely help them on for the account receivable funding. Next one is gap funding. Um, for the next few, for the for the last month or so, we see so much gap funding coming in. So gap funding essentially is just a personal loan. They don't care about you have business or not. They look at your personal return, two years of personal return, and they can fund you based on your tax return. So all they're asking for is W-2s and tax returns, and that's it. They don't ask for your bank statement, none of those things. Um, normally, it can fund within two weeks. Um, now, the range that I'm seeing somewhere around 10000 to to forty, I think 40000 is the max that I've seen out there. Uh, but, you know, somewhere around that range. Now, if somebody come in here saying, that, okay, I need $300,000 for gap funding, mm, you better make sure that that client has a lot of personal income in order for you to get gap funding. So as far as I know, gap funding, they can fund up to 50% of your annual income. So if your annual income is 100000 they can maximum fund you to 50000 Now you do the math. If you need $300,000, you better have you better be able to show them that they make six hundred thousand seven hundred thousand dollars okay so um I, I see a lot of gap funding coming in actually it's not the right product for them they think that it's easy because if you looked at it right so all you have to do is just saying that hey um you know the the interest rate is very, very attractive uh start at six percent yeah it's still starting starting six six percent um you know so on and so forth but you might not work for them because some I see a lot of people coming in saying, hey, I need the money for equipment. I need a I need the money to purchase $150,000 equipment. I need the money to purchase, you know, uh, a property. I need the money to do fix and flip. This might not be the right type of product for them. Um, again, because just the loan amount is too small for the project that you want to do. So make sure that when your clients submit a gap funding to you, uh, through your website, you will receive an email that you have a client that uh, uh, submitted get funding. So by all means, go out there and ask them, what do you need to get funding for? Okay, we might have other options for you. Okay, so again, that is get funding and also relatively easy to fund. Cost segregation. Um, we have a very full detailed training by our, by our advisor on YouTube, cost segregation, what is it? 
it has a lot to do with commercial properties. So as we all know, when you purchase a commercial property, you have, I think you have 27 years, right? Uh, you have oh, you have 39 years to um, to depreciate your commercial property. So yes, we all know the value of the property increased year after year after year. We all know that. But the government allow you to depreciate your uh, investment property or your commercial property, okay? So the way to do it is that they do it in 39 years. So every single year, you take a deduction. Every single year, you take a deduction. But what cost segregation can do is that they actually speed up the uh, the tax, uh, the, the, the depreciation. So instead of 39 years, they speed up to um, uh, in about seven years. So you can imagine all of a sudden, you the, the person who owns that commercial property can get a lot of money, tax money back. Now they're not getting the money in, in tax. They can actually write off a lot of taxes. So especially for people that owns multi-families, owns mixed use apartment buildings, so on and so forth. When we do the cost segregation, all of a sudden that year, he, he has tax write off for hundreds of thousands of dollars. So all of a sudden he get all this money. What are they going to do? They use the money to purchase another property. And that is what happened. So if you know people out there that owns commercial lending, I, uh, owns commercial properties, ask them, have you done any cost segregations? If you have not, submit a scenario to us. Now, for something like this, it's very complicated. We don't want you to go out there to explain to the client what that is, okay? Ask them to watch the video. Once they fill out the application, our specialist is going to go out there to have an interview with them to explain to them exactly what it is. So you do not need to do the work. You just submit the scenario, let the advisors to do the work for you. So that is cost segregation. We also have another product called retirement account rollover. I think I'm running out of time right here. Retirement account rollover. A lot of people want to start up their business or a lot of people saying, hey, I need money to, um, you know, for my working capital, but I don't have any tax return to show. I don't have any collateral. I don't have any bank statement. I don't have anything to show. So most likely I cannot give you a traditional loan. But however, if you have 401k, IRA, annuity, anything that is called the deferred uh, retirement account, we can actually roll over that money, convert that money from your 401k into a working capital for your company. So that is what rollover is all about. The way it works is that when people invest in 401k and IRA, you know you're investing into what? into some stocks or mutual funds or some uh, companies, right? So the same idea is that when you have money in, in that area, so what they do is that they take the money that you need. So let's say you need $10,000, $20,000, $50,000, whatever that might be. They take out that $50,000 away from your 401k and put that into your corporation. So let's say you have an LLC, they will help you to set up an S corporation for your company. So that ten that $50,000 will be invest in your business's 401k. So actually it's it's the same thing. Instead of instead invest it in other businesses, you invest in your own business. So that is why it's legally that they are able to use the fund that you have in 401k as a working capital for your own company. But obviously it has to go through a series of um legal document. It's not that difficult to do. Uh, pretty much is all standardized these days. And they will set up a S corporation for the company. They will roll over the money to that uh, S corporation. And now you can use the money for your business or for your client's business. So that's another option for our client, as long as they have the 401k IRA and things like this. Okay. Uh, last but not least, credit repair. Uh, we can do both credit repair, personal credit repair and business credit repair. So, Many times when we see a clients that come to us have 500, 600 credit score, we will suggest them go out there, get your credit fixed first before you come back to us. Otherwise, you know, I mean, it, it's, it, it will cost you a lot of money to get that loan. If you're not in any hurry, no need to so hurry to get the loan. Fix your credit first and then come out here to get the loan. Okay, so that is credit repair. ERTC, employee tax return. Uh, employee retention tax credit. This is not a loan. 
this is a tax credit that the federal government paying back to our employee for any business that got impacted through COVID. Now the money is going back to the employer, okay? And maximum they can get is each employee they can get the employee uh, the, the business owner can get back up to twenty six thousand dollars. It depending on the uh, uh, employee tax, how much employee tax that they pay. So same thing for something like this. Again, have them to fill it out. It's a very intensive. Um, not intensive. It's very long applications that they have to go through to understand, you know, how many employees that they have, so on and so forth. So I suggest you not to fill this out for your client, but have your clients to fill it out for themselves. And same thing, once they fill it out, our advisor is going to reach out to them and explain to them how it works and start collecting uh, documentations and tax returns from them to see if they can qualify for it or not. Okay. So, Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you. But now remember, we are expanding our product line. Very short, very soon, you will see two more product line coming into our portfolio that all business owners will buy from you. We'll get this from you, okay? I'm going to leave it right there. I'm not going to leak anything. I want you to get excited. I want you to imagine what that would be. Because when that thing comes out, it really, really puts Sequoia into the next level. It really put you into the next level. Because when every time, see all these loans right here. When you talk to a business owner, they will say, yeah, nay, ooh, yeah, like, whatever that might be, right? But when this new product come out, you talk to the business owner, they will say yes. They will say yes every time, okay? So I leave it right here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for another episode. So now we are at 8.52. We have eight more minutes. If you want to unmute yourself, ask your questions, comments, you like it, you don't like it, whatever. It's the time for us to chat. So again, guys, floor is yours. Let me see. Any questions right here? Is Alan, you got some Steve? questions in the meeting hey. group. Yes. Hey, Steve. What's up? Go ahead. How you doing? Yeah, I just saw a couple in there if you want to answer those. Okay, so I do see a few questions right here. Uh, don't hospital get the equipment like operating tables, experience, uh, tools to get it through state, through government program. Yes, there are a lot of grants out there to support them. But the reality is that a lot of doctors, a lot of uh, 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 private practice, they just not enough to get the grant is just not enough. They still need to go out there to, you know, using loan and purchasing other equipments and they still need funding, right? So yes, a lot of them do get that, but a lot of them don't get it, okay? Uh, I have a new potential client that wants to open up a brick and mortar a retail for her wine and spirit business. What does she need to submit? Same thing, if that is the new business, working capital, okay? So, but she, nip, she does need to have experience in running this type of business. Is credit score a factor for gap funding? Yes, it is. If you look at, if you click on this, it tells you exactly right here. Gap funding, uh, what do we say right here? Um, 600 or better for W2. 700 or better. Oh, they should say, they should say uh, credit score. Uh, I, I I see what you're saying. So yes, 660 for, for W2s and 700 for um, self-employed. I network with potential clients with who manufacture ships like vessels and aircraft equipment for government projects and government contracts. Can you please give us your contact number? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, if you network with those companies, it's perfect. Ask them. I mean, I'm sure that they have a lot of clients. Um, let them know that you can help them to fund their clients. Okay. And uh, Alan, can you please? Okay. I put down my contact number. Okay, hold on. So this is my number right here. What would be the client need to submit a proof experience? Okay, uh, Sonia, depending on what type of loan you're asking for, right? So experience means that if they already have a business, I need to see two years of tax return. Now I know that he's experienced. Now if he's, uh, he's, uh, he's new to the business, then I need to see two years of personal tax return. I need to see what, what is he doing for the for living. Now, if he works in a Walmart as a cashier for two years, and now he wants to open up a restaurant, obviously he does not have the experience to show. But if he works in a restaurant for two years, and now he wants to open up a pizza 
a, a pizza place. Yeah, I can definitely use that as uh, as experience. Okay. So, I think this is the problem with that, and I'm sorry, but yes. suppose like the scenario you just said, where he works at Walmart for the last two years, but say prior to that, say five years ago, he was a massage you know he worked in a massage parlor and now he wants to open up a massage you know parlor of his own uh so that wouldn't have happened in the last two years it happened you know two three maybe five years ago uh, he still has the experience how does he submit proof that he did these three years in a massage parlor five years ago right unfortunately a lot of the lender will only look back what for maximum three years um, because again, in any other in, in, in any industry, you know, I mean, as the time goes on, the industry changes, the 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 uh, the, the the law and regulation might change, the way that you service client might change. So again, if you run a business five, 10 years ago, the way that you run a business today versus five, 10 years ago is totally different. So again, I mean, for lenders to feel comfortable to provide a funding for them, the maximum that they look back is about three years. So again, unfortunately, that is the way it works. Now, if they still need funding to open up a shop like this, then we might need to look into other possibilities. So for example, does he have any uh, a 401k IRA that we can use that as the working capital for them? Or does he have any collaterals? Like for example, does he have any real estate that he can uh, provide as collaterals uh, uh, to get the funding for them, so on and so forth? Okay. Or... She can partner up with somebody that who has the experience right now. Yeah, that will work too. Okay? And where are you going to uh, submit this recording? Because I know you're recording this. Where did we find the recording? Is it on the website? So right here on the website. So for example, in your case, let's say he wants to open up a business. So it will be working capital right here. And all you have to do is to submit. And once you submit, then our team is going to respond to your email with the proper application and the list of documentations that we need from you or, or from your client. So no, all you need to do I was asking about the Zoom call right now. Where are you going to like the Zoom call? You're recording it? Is it going to oh, be- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right here on our YouTube channel. Oh, on the YouTube channel. Okay, thank right. you. And let me go on to put that onto the link also. Thank you. And this is our YouTube channel. Okay, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Anyone else? Uh, okay. Uh, is there a mentorship program within Sequoia Lending? Absolutely. That's what this thing is all about. So if you have any questions or whatsoever, let us know and we assign you a mentor to let you know, you know, how to do this. And absolutely. So um, we do have a mentorship program. Uh, Deborah is asking, so when we get a client that is interested in one of our products and Sequoia does business with client, how does Sequoia contact us to let us know that they are funding our client? That is why every single one of us, when you when you join Sequoia, you will have your own website. So your client is supposed to submit a scenario through your website. So for example, let's say you look at this right here. You see admin.seclending.com. That is the company website. So when you set up yours, it could be Deborah.seclending or it could be whatever that belongs to you. So when a client, for example, come in here and submit a scenario right here, you will, this scenario is registered in your back office. Okay. So now you own that client. And now when we communicate with this client, you will be including in the scenario, uh, in all the emails and whatsoever, you know, throughout the process, what's going on. And we will update you with all the status. And when the deal is closed, our processing team is going to reach out to you saying, Hey, your deal is closed. How can you, uh, you know, we need to pay you. How can I pay you? How do you sign up? Ask who invited you here, uh, Dory, for tonight. And there got to be somebody invited you here. And if that person uh, is already a Sequoia member, he has a web, he or she has a website like this. You see, join us right here. All you have to do is just to click on join us on their website, join it. And now you have your own website that you will run this business. Um, any other questions? Hey, Alan. Uh, who is this? It's Mo. Hey, Mo. What's up, bro? Hey, what's going on, bro? Hey, what's what's what's, what's a good product? We've got some people in the music industry on here. Uh, what's a good product to help them to fund uh, uh, in the music industry? In the music industry, that is called entertainment funding. 
that it's not our specialties. Okay, now, um, as a matter of fact, we actually have somebody that asking for a forty-four million dollar loan in the movie industry because they're not producing movies. So right now, as we speak, I am talking to all of our advisors. Is 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 right now out there talking to different lenders to see who can fund, um, something like this. So once we have it, we'll let you know. But however, let's say a music industry, they need money for 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 equipment. They need to buy buy stereos, buy mixers, whatever that might be. We can fund them equipment loan all day long. But if they say, hey, I need funding to produce a, a, an album, that is a totally different type of funding. So um, right. we will venture into that space. Okay, It's a totally different animal. Okay, okay. cool. Yep. Anyone else? Anyone else? If not, I'm uh, going to... I'm sorry. I have hey, a Carmen. question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, my question is is in the same vein as uh, what Mo was saying about the um, needing equipment for music production. Um, I have a, a person who potentially needs equipment for podcasting. Uh, would that fall into the same wheelhouse or is that uh, yep. separate? That's, that's equipment. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because so I did again, hear you earlier when you said a computer is not equipment, but if it's used as now part, of let, let us put it this way: if if, if they okay. are just purchasing a computer from from um um uh, uh, from Walmart, from CVS, or from one of those electronic store, most likely it can go into working capital, but. If you're purchasing a super computer, so for example, there are studios, music studios, or um, you know, photography studios that they need to purchase all these super computers to, you know, to do their graphic thing, and that computer costs about ten, twenty thousand dollars. Yes, we can do equipment funding for something like this. So really, depending on what they are buying, if they can purchase something from just you know from 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 a from a regular store, then most likely it's going to be working capital. But we can still fund them either way. As long as they can show that they have two years of tax return, that they have, you know, income coming in from their business, then we can fund them for working capital. Did I answer Perfect. your question? Thank you. Yep. Okay. Anyone else? If not. Yeah, Alan. Yes, sir. Hey, Jeff. Hey, it's Jeff. I. Uh... In all of these loan scenarios, are these all secured by personal guarantee or are these unsecured? Okay, very good. So most of these loans are personal guarantee loans. Okay, working capital, they want to know who you are. Uh, truck loan, obviously. The only type of loans that is not personal guarantee in this side is the uh, gap funding. Well, again, that is also personal guarantee also. Uh, account receivable. We have lender that can fund account receivable without personal guarantee. Um, but other than that, yeah, they are personal guarantee. But on the, on the real estate side of it, there are a lot more lend, uh, loans that is not a uh, non-recourse means that no personal guarantee because on the on the real estate side you have the actual building right there for them to take away for businesses you don't right so a lot of these deals are personal guaranteed loans right makes sense so on a fix and flip loan would that be a pg personal guarantee yes. or is that yes fix and fix and flip is small deals and uh and, and and plus the the whole building is not complete. So again, you you could, you know, fix the property halfway and you disappeared. And the lender does not want to have a half built building to take back that building, right? Yeah. Uh, so yes, I mean it, it's, it's again personal guarantee. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. So what if the uh, okay? So the current scenario I'm working on is borrower wants to buy a four flat, fully functioning. Uh, two units are occupied, two are empty, and they want to buy it for, let's say, 355000 They want to put $10,000 in per unit. They're going to take the two empty units and renovate those first. 
then when those reno uh, renovations are done, they're going to take the two units that are currently occupied and move the tenants into the two newly rehabbed. And then they're going to rehab the older units and put it back out on the market. Um, so it's a fully functioning building. There's really nothing wrong with it. They just want to put new appliances, pretty much put lipstick on a pig and let the thing run and do its thing. Yeah. Easy. Is that viable? All day long. Okay. Yep. And so do we go 90 LTV with the purchase and rehab or we go okay. more than that? So if you're talking about fix and flip, okay, fix and flip, we can go, depending on experience, we can go up to 100%. 100% means that purchase money and renovation money. We can do that up to 100%. But I do not suggest that because, again, the rate and term will be so much higher and you have to that, – that, that's a lot more upfront money that you need to pay up and things like this because, again, the lender would like to guarantee their loan. So most of the time I say that if they can put down 10% or 20% of the total cost, yeah. they will have a much better rate and term. So, however – we can go, depending on experience, we can go up to 100%. But what if it's fix and hold? Same thing. Fix and hold. You have the fixed component to it. So we can still give you the money to fix it and, and purchase the property and renovate the property. So after that, that you have to refinance the property to a long-term no, long loan. So anything that you say fix has the fix into it is going to be a short-term loan, 13 months max. Yeah. Yeah, she said she can actually get it all done inside of three months. That's fine. I mean, we still give you 13 months, and you can pay it off in three months. That's absolutely fine. Okay. What are interest rates typically right now for a fix and flip? I would say somewhere around 10 to 12% range. Even though no, you have you, the, the, best, the best one I've seen is 10% with all kind of experience. Now, remember, this type of loan is interest only. And only pay interest based on the fund that you use. So for example, let's say you do a fix and flip and you need $200,000 to do the fix, but you don't need $200,000 on day one. Day one, you might need $10,000, right? So oh, now you only pay interest on $10,000, right? Right. So right. again, so that is, that's what the market looks like right now. Okay, good enough. Thanks. All right, guys. Well, again, I need to wrap this thing up. Thank you so much. And check out our YouTube channel. And pay attention to our Facebook. Uh, we will have major, major announcements next week. So until then, thank you so much, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye. Thanks, Alan. Good, Good night. night. Good, Good night. 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 Good night.